time now for a weekend cover story. As we get ready to crown a new king, many Aussies are right now asking if it's also time to make a big change here. Elizabeth was a constant in our lives for over 70 years. But my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family. But as King Charles prepares to take the throne, people are questioning who should be our head of state. It's time the Australian people chose one of our own to represent us as our head of state. Someone accountable to us. The last time this decision was in the hands of Australians was in 1999, when the Republican referendum failed with only 45% support. Australia forever, for God's sake, the Queen. It's clear our government is not shying away from constitutional matters as the voice debate also heats up. This moment has been a very long time in the making. So many are wondering if we should also be asking the public, is it time to break up with Great Britain? Well, to discuss that big question, we're joined now by Australian Republic Movement spokesperson Adam Spencer. Good morning, Adam. As well as Alessandro Rossini from the Australian Monarchists League in Melbourne. Good morning to you too. Good Adam, morning. we'll start with you. Um, the King's coronation is only two weeks away. Why should we be having this conversation now? Well, Queen Elizabeth was an amazing person, one of the formative figures of the last century. It was appropriate to let her passing follow with a time of reflection, a time of commemoration. Now's the time to ask, do we want a foreign-born monarch, one of the 1% of the 1% to be Australia's head of state. He's not just the King of England who happens to have a role in Australia. He is King Charles of Australia. In 2023, does it feel right for our head of state to be a foreign-born king? We say no. It should be one of us who serves in that position for all of us. Alessandro, let's head to you. What do you think about Adam's call there? Why do you feel so strongly about keeping the king as our head of state? Well, I am a constitutional monarchist and I'm a proud constitutional monarchist. Um, and I say that both as a young Australian and also as someone of a strong multicultural background given my Greek and Italian descent. I can vividly remember my grandparents who left uh, Greece coming to Australia speaking about why well, they picked our country, because it's stable, because it's prosperous and because uh, it is a better system of government. Uh, we've attributed the monarchy in Australia to a stable period. They remember the Queen's early reign uh, in the 1950s and 60s. Um, and they are so grateful and we are so grateful for the opportunity to come here and to live in a stable country because of our system of constitutional Does that stability, that prosperity change, though, in the event of a republic? Well, potentially. I mean, look at France at the moment. We've seen uh, the French president, an elected head of state, I might add as well, use an article in the French constitution uh, to essentially uh, push through a law and a piece of legislation without the parliament's consent. I mean, that's hardly democratic, and they elect their president. So uh, to suggest that by somehow becoming a republic, it's going to be a more democratic system, it's quite frankly wrong. I this is what Monica stood. They say, oh, you said the word president. Let's look at all the worst presidents in the world. It's going to be a Donald Trump, isn't it? It's not going to be. Our system will not be like that. It's not a political person running for a political position. It's far more analogous to the Irish model, who produces someone like Mary Robinson, the mother of the nation. And when Mary Robinson walked on the international stage, everyone knew she was Ireland's head of state. When King Charles, King of Australia, walks on the international stage, he's doing so as the head of 15 different states, but people only ever see him as the head of England. So, I mean, it's one thing to say, let's become a republic, but you have to choose a particular model of a republic. So what are you guys proposing? At, at the ARM, we spoke to 10,000 Australians. We came up with something very simple. We make a list and we have a vote. The list comes from each state and territory, providing one potential candidate, the federal government three, and from that short list of distinguished Australians, all Australians have a vote. It's a system of democracy, not of monarchy. As I sit here, if we don't change, I can tell you our next three heads of state that will run the rest of this century. Charles, William, George. In 2023, it's bizarre in a democracy, in an egalitarian country like Australia, <coughs> that I can tell us a century's worth of head of states. Um, Alessandro, to you, uh, quite often the argument from your side is, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Um, some would argue it is broken. I would, I would beg to differ there. Um, a 2020 uh, Economist Review Democracy Index found that out of the world's top five democracies, 
for a constitutional monarchy. Our system is by far the most democratic in the world. And I would go quickly to Adam, Adam's point about the suggestion that the head of state or the president of Australia won't be political. I mean, we're, we would be potentially electing this person. Of course it's going to be political. I mean, we could have a Labor president and a Liberal prime minister. Uh, we've had this revolving door of prime ministers in Australia. I hardly see how it's going to make us any more democratic. But, uh, Alessandro, what about when Australia plays England in the footy? Like, <laughs> who does our head of state go for? Yeah. Well, the Governor-General in Australia is our executive head of state. According to the Constitution, all the powers of the King are transferred to the Governor-General. So the Governor-General would be going for Australia and I'm sure the other 25 million Australians would also be going for Australia too. <laughs> uh, and, the, and the King of England, Prince William, in the lead-up to the 2022 Qatar World Cup, voted for South Korea over Australia. Where did our future head of state's loyalty lie? One with England, two with England, three with South Korea, stitching up votes for England in 2026. Yet your Australian head of state should unquestionably have loyalty first and foremost to Australia. That doesn't happen at the moment because it's the King of England. So you've told us who we, you don't want as Australia's head of state. What should we be looking for in the, the head of Two state? things. One, they should unquestioningly put Australia first. That doesn't happen under our current model. It should be one of us holding that position for all of us. And secondly, it should be their full-time job. If you met King Charles at a dinner party, didn't know what he did, so what do you do with yourself? I'm the King. Well, that's awesome. What does that involve? And he rattled off the first five things of being the King. Guaranteed he would not mention I'm also the head of state of Australia. Alessandro, I don't think it's unreasonable that Australia's head of state consider being head of state as their full-time job. Well, again, the executive head of state is the Governor-General. He lives in Canberra. He works in Canberra. He's a former member of our Defence Force and he is unquestionably an Australian. He's the one who grants royal assent to our laws and I will also add that royal assent has never been refused. Um, he's the one who stood on the steps of Parliament House in Canberra and proclaimed King Charles III as King of Australia. And in doing, um, that, and in doing that, he swore an oath of faith and obedience to a foreign-born king in 2023 an egalitarian democratic Australia should not have our Governor-General and our Prime Minister swearing an oath of faith and obedience to a foreign-born monarch. We should be led by one of us who holds that position for all of us. Well, it's, uh, it's an issue that, as you can see, is, is continues to bubble away and will do for some time. Yeah, we know the, uh, the government has promised to address yes. it if they're elected for a second term in Parliament, so this debate isn't going away. Thank you both for joining us this Appreciate morning. Appreciate you. The Royal Family has this morning paid tribute to Queen Elizabeth II on what would have been her 97th birthday. Taking to Twitter, the Prince and Princess of Wales shared a photo taken by Kate of the late monarch with some of her grandchildren. King Charles and Queen Consort Camilla also shared a beautiful photo alongside the words, Today we remember the incredible life and legacy of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese will be attending the NATO summit in July, despite earlier suggestions he would decline the invitation. The event is set to be held in Lithuania with support for Ukraine, expected to be high on the agenda. It will mark the second time Australia has taken part in a NATO summit. Hey there today, fans. Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?